Today, I want to talk about why your T4 medication just simply isn't working, especially if you have had a partial or a total thyroidectomy. So I see a lot of questions come in from people that say they have had a total thyroidectomy, radioactive iodine, a partial thyroidectomy, and their doctor put them on Lebo, T4, Synthroid, Levoxyl, and they're on it and they're on it and their doctor just keeps raising their dose and raising their dose and nothing is changing. Sure, their TSH is going down, the free T4 looks all pretty, and that's probably where their doctors are stopping testing. So if you're stuck on T4, most likely you're not getting your free T3 and reverse T3 tested, but neither here nor there, you're not feeling any better. You are stuck on T4. So here's why that doesn't work. So this is gonna be a game changer for you and you can probably hear the excitement in my voice. The latest introduction, the latest member of the family to the Fixer line is Metabolism Fixer. And this, oh my God, I formulated this just for all my people out there that need to lose weight, that need help in the weight loss department, that can't lose weight no matter what they do, that feel like they have a slow metabolism, and it might be thinking of trying all those peptides out there. You know, the Beverly Hills soccer mom drug of choice for weight loss peptides. Or even if you're on them already and you're like, man, these are really expensive and I'm still not losing weight. Add in metabolism fixer. Here's what I did. I took the power of T2, which increases your basal metabolic rate while you are sitting there watching Netflix. You're burning fat while you're watching Netflix. I combined it with a very unique patented ingredient called Suppressa. Suppressa has multiple clinical trials backing its efficacy in reducing your appetite, decreasing snacking, and providing way more control over your food intake. It is amazing. We also see improved emotional well-being, just decreased food cravings all around, reduced hunger, and weight management. Add on top of that, we have green tea extract, we have purple forest purple tea extract, both of which affect the metabolism in a very positive way without the jitters of normal fat burning supplements out there from the 1980s and 90s, right? The ones that made you feel like you're having a heart attack. You will not have that in any of my supplements, thyroid fixer or metabolism fixer. But metabolism fixer, ooh, yeah, we kicked it up a notch. It is in powder form, so you can drink it through your day. It's gonna flavor your water. We got orange crush and refreshing citrus. I love them both. It is going to keep you under control all day long. So you throw a couple scoops in your water bottle in the morning, throw a scoop or two in your water bottle throughout the day. You will have fat burning and appetite control the entire day for what? An eighth of a price of the peptides? Oh my God, you can't go wrong. So grab some metabolism fixer today. Please let me know how you do on it. I am super excited for you. Super excited. If we think about the mechanism, the biological mechanism of the pituitary and the hypothalamus and what TSH is and whether you have a thyroid or lack of a thyroid. So let's do if you have a thyroid first, right? So you have a thyroid, your T4 isn't working, you're still suffering with symptoms, you have not lost any weight whatsoever, and you are only on T4 and your doctor keeps increasing your dose, increasing your dose. Okay. So in that case, what we have to think about is your thyroid gland, when it was functioning properly, I know you still have it, right? So you were diagnosed with Hashimoto's hypothyroidism. Something is not working properly. If it's Hashimoto's, you're getting your thyroid glands getting attacked by antibodies. If it's secondary hypothyroidism, for whatever reason, whether it was medication or stress or over-exercising, whatever brought on this condition of hypothyroidism, your thyroid gland is not functioning properly. So primary or secondary hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's, your thyroid gland isn't functioning properly. That's the bottom line. And you are not making the proper amounts of T4 and T3 that a healthy thyroid gland does.
So in conventional medicine, what they do is they put you on T4, and now that T4 must convert over into the active form of T3. T4 is a storage hormone. That is your storage thyroid hormone. It is inactive. There are no receptors on your cells for T4 medication. You only have receptor sites on your cells for T3. So that T4 must go through a conversion process a deiodinization process where we are removing an iodine atom and we are converting it over into T3. Now, we're not going to get into everything that's required, such as proper amounts of selenium and magnesium and iodine. Just know that it has to convert over. So if we're just giving you T4, 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 then obviously that's not going to do its job if it's not converting properly over into the active thyroid hormone T3. So that T3 is what has to get into your cell. That is that your cells have receptor sites on them for the thyroid hormone T3. So that's what has to get into the cell. What if you're not converting? So that's problem number one. So we're giving you T4. We just keep increasing the dose, increasing the dose, and we're never checking your reverse T3. We're never checking your free T3. We're never even seeing whether or not that T4 that we keep pumping into your system is even converting or not. And we're just, again, this is my phrase, crossing our fingers and wishing on a rainbow that you feel better. And then you keep going back to your doctor and you keep saying, I'm not feeling better. I'm not feeling better. Oh, well, let's go to 112. Oh, well, let's go to, you know, 175. Whatever it is, you just keep increasing your dose and crossing your fingers and wishing on a rainbow that it converts. And per your doctor, hey, you should be converting fine. You still have a thyroid gland. It's still producing some T3. It's still producing some of its own thyroid hormone. We're just supplementing with what's not there. And then we're looking at the TSH. And TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone. It is released by the pituitary gland. There is a negative feedback loop that occurs. And of course, the pituitary says everything is cool here because you have 175 milligrams of T4 being pumped into your body exogenously in the form of your synthroid. So I don't know, everything looks good for me. So the, the pituitary stops sending out that TSH and your TSH goes down. So your doctor thinks your TSH looks pretty. And maybe your free T4 even goes up. And well, yeah, of course, because you're pumping your body full of T4 medication. No one's looking at the free T3 or the reverse T3. And you stay in the synthroid box in that T4 box, never, ever, ever feeling better. So that's if you have a thyroid gland for my partial and total thyroidectomy patients. Well, actually, you know what? The partial thyroidectomy, I could put you in the group with the hypothyroidism and the Hashimoto's because you still have a portion of your thyroid. Listen, we could look at Hashimoto patients and say they probably only have half of a thyroid gland too, just from the years of destruction and, and basically shrinking down the thyroid gland. So partial thyroidectomy patients, you're in that first group. Total thyroidectomy, you do not have a thyroid gland. No longer. You don't have one. Does TSH even matter? Based on what I just explained, and, and my, my good friend, admin of the Attuned Thyroid, Donna Grant, she sent me the greatest picture ever. So when we think about the mechanism of the pituitary, the pituitary sends out a message to the thyroid gland, right? The thyroid gland. So if you don't have a thyroid gland, what's the pituitary sending out TSH for? There's really no point, is there? So for my total thyroidectomy patients, hold on folks, I know for my podcast listeners, I'm just gonna have to explain it, but it's this group of men laughing and screaming. It says, we keep testing the TSH even when we know they have no thyroid and they're all just like laughing and slapping each other on the back, a bunch of doctors. Okay, it's pointless. It is completely pointless at that point to test your TSH. Now it gets even more pointless because now you have removed the gland that once made 80% roughly T4 and roughly 20% T3. Your thyroid gland made a little bit of T3. Yes, it did. It's no longer there. Now you have zero active thyroid hormone being produced by your body. And again, we're giving you T4, giving you T4, crossing our fingers and wishing on a rainbow that that converts over into the active form, 
T3 to get into your cells, to give you a metabolism, to grow your hair and strengthen your nails and improve your mood. Okay, well, if we remove your thyroid gland, why don't we replace it with the same thing that it once made? So if it once made T4 and T3, why don't we give you thyroidectomy patients or radioactive iodine patients? Why don't we give you T4 and T3? Because that's what it once did. So why don't we replace it? You know, one-to-one ratio. So that is my problem with using T4 only with anybody, anybody, but especially my total thyroidectomy and partial thyroidectomy patients. But also, listen, Hashimoto's hypothyroidism, why are we pumping up your T4 and not checking the reverse T3 and the free T3? Why are we asking you just how are you feeling? If we keep increasing your dose and you're not feeling any better, that's a red flag. It's a red flag for you as a patient to run and find a practitioner that knows what they're doing. And then it's a red flag for us practitioners to listen to you as a patient. So I hope this helps. This is why your T4 is not working. There are many conversion issues. T4 must convert into the active form of T3. We have to check free T3 and reverse T3. And then, of course, you can always listen to one of my other videos or podcasts on all about reverse T3 because then we'll dive into all those factors that affect it. So those are kind of, that's the checklist that we then have to look at if you aren't converting, whether it's a genetic SNP that prevents that deiodinization of T4 to T3, you have conversion issues, iron, high insulin, high estrogen. You can go back and listen to that. We'll link to that in the show notes. But hopefully that helps you. Please share this with anybody that you know that needs it. And please subscribe to my podcast, The Thyroid Fix, that you can find on any, any, any podcast platform. So you just search for it, subscribe, write me a review if you can, if you're on iTunes or Apple Podcasts. And I will see you in the next video or on the next podcast. Thank you so much for listening to The Thyroid Fix Podcast. As always, please share this with anyone that you know that needs this information. And I guarantee you there's a lot of people out there and in your life who do. Also, please remember that anything that you hear on this podcast is not intended to diagnose or treat. So you always want to check with your doctor about any advice given that you hear on this podcast. And if you would like to book a discovery call, a free discovery call, To go over everything that's going on with you and to go over how I can help you, please go to my website at amyhorneman.com. The link is always in the show notes. And click on book a call. Choose a time and a day that's right for you. And we will see how we can help you. Thanks for listening.